After the fall of Avdivka in February 2024, French President Emmanuel Macron stated that the West should do everything it could to make sure Russia does not prevail in Ukraine. He pointed out that past taboos, like sending long-range missiles to the Ukrainian military, had already been broken. Therefore, the West should not rule out potentially putting boots on the ground. Macron, who called the meeting where he made these remarks, represented a nation whose higher-ups are increasingly worried about the Russian economy's transition to a wartime footing. To the French, such a transition and its contribution to renewed Russian effectiveness on the battlefield greatly threatens the security of Europe. Europe would therefore need to see to its defense and the maintenance of a first-rate domestic defense industry. As part of this broader security focus, France is rearming again and bidding to reclaim the place it had occupied for centuries, the most powerful military state on the European continent. In this video, we will look at France's arms buildup and what its efforts mean for Europe's broader defense posture. Despite its reputation, France has long been a large military spender in Europe. Even in the period of peace after the end of the Cold War, France never fell far below NATO's 2% benchmark. Its lowest military expenditure between 1991 and 2022 was 1.8% of GDP. In January 2023, Paris announced it would increase military spending by more than a third between 2024 and 2030. The result is that the military budget would have doubled since President Macron came to office in 2017. In addressing this new increase, Macron acknowledged that the post-Cold War era, which he called a peace dividend, had come to an end. The new military spending, he said, would be designed to make France a forward-thinking military, capable of being one war ahead. Major investments in the new build-up would include drones, cyber warfare and intelligence. The strategy would be one designed to fight a peer or near-peer conflict as opposed to the asymmetric operations France has long taken part in on the African continent, which mostly involve rapid skirmishes and counterinsurgency operations with low-level firepower. France is currently ranked as the world's 11th most powerful military in the Global Firepower Index. It has a 200,000-strong active-duty army with an additional 26,000 in reserve and 150,000 paramilitary personnel. It has a robust air force with 972 total aircraft, 224 of these are fighters, 118 are transports, 140 are trainers, 44 are special mission planes, 17 are tankers, and 447 are helicopters, 69 of which are of the attack variety. On the ground, France is a lot more vulnerable. It only has 222 active tanks, and not all of them are ready to be deployed. It has over 85,000 other military vehicles, but only 96 self-propelled artillery units, 9 multiple launch rockets or MLRS systems, and no towed artillery units. These rankings were current as of January 2024. This comparatively small stockpile is a big problem for the French and Europe, as the war in Ukraine has revealed how rapidly these assets can be destroyed in a peer or near-peer conflict. Russia's tank losses have been notorious, but even at the height of its effectiveness in the summer and autumn of 2022, Ukraine was still losing two tanks a day, which would only give the active French tank fleet a few months before depletion. To address these deficiencies, France began a 20-year military modernization program called Project Scorpion, which began its concept phase in 2010 and officially launched in 2014. That date was no coincidence, as it marked the start of the troubles in Ukraine. Russia's actions back then signaled to Paris that the post-Cold War peace dividend might be on its last legs. The next year, France reversed its trend of budget cuts to its military and began to spend more on defense. In 2016, the French government pledged $6.7 billion over the following 11 years as part of the Scorpion program. A major part of this program is to modernize France's tanks and vehicles. Project Scorpion set out to upgrade 200 Leclerc main battle tanks as the centerpiece of its vehicle-centric focus. Additionally, there are ongoing upgrades to over 1,800 Griffin armored personnel carriers and 978 Serval vehicles. New procurements have been part of the armored build-up too, with France setting out to acquire over 2,000 new Serval VBMRL vehicles, 625 new VBCI infantry fighting vehicles, and 300 new EBRC Jaguar armored reconnaissance vehicles. The Jaguar was introduced into service in 2022 and is a major improvement over the earlier AMX-10RC and ERC-90 Sagai vehicles, which are steadily being retired. The Jaguar is a good choice not only for reconnaissance but also as a fire support platform. Its 40mm cannon, MPP anti-tank missiles, and remote-controlled 7.62mm machine gun are well suited to making it a mobile firepower unit. 
It also has smoke grenade launchers to help protect it from enemy fire. It has a top speed of 90 km per hour and a range of 800 km. The Jaguar is cheap, and it saves expenses on both of the earlier vehicles it replaced, and it uses the same chassis as the VBMR Griffin, which in turn is based on a commercial truck chassis. Although the price of 1 million euros was the original intent, the vehicle's sophistication and enhanced capabilities led to a unit price of approximately 5 million euros. Many of the parts needed for the Jaguar can instead be adapted from civilian sources. The Jaguar is therefore capable but also easily replaceable in a peer or near-peer conflict, making it ideal for France's new focus on high-intensity, state-based warfare. The upgrades to the VBMR Griffin have the same idea in mind. All of the Project Scorpion upgrades and new acquisitions have been done under the operations of a consortium of French companies. Such a move was meant to ensure a robust domestic defense sector. The companies involved in this initiative included Nexta, Thales, and Renault Trucks Defense. The first 689 of the new Serval VBMRL vehicles are expected to enter service by next year. As mentioned, military intelligence capabilities are a key part of the Scorpion buildup. Specifically, France seeks to emulate the data-sharing attributes of the United States Armed Forces, which allow unprecedented interoperability of arms to destroy targets as needed. For example, an F-35 fighter jet could use its stealth qualities to penetrate an enemy air defense zone and find a target of opportunity, but rather than giving away its position by opening its internal weapons bay to fire a missile, it can call upon a cruise missile strike from a ship at sea or an artillery strike from a HIMARS system hundreds of miles away, sharing the precise coordinates of the enemy through its unprecedented sense of fusion and situational awareness. Although ground forces are not quite as capable, France is looking to increase its vehicle's situational awareness. This part of Project Scorpion is called Combined Collaborative Combat. As an example, the Jaguar is loaded with sensors and electronic warfare measures. It has an Antares missile alert system that has 360-degree coverage and the Thales Barge, an active jamming device that interferes with improvised explosive devices. There is also an acoustic sensor mounted to the roof to spot enemy gunfire. This is called the Metrovi Pillar V. The Antares system will also be equipped on the upgraded Leclerc's and Griffin APCs. Providing the new vehicles with improved situational awareness will help to create a smarter military, capable of sharing data between branches and creating something like a French kill web. An example might be a Jaguar using its sophisticated sensors to approach an enemy attack position. This would normally be dangerous, but the accurate data it will provide would then be sent to air or artillery support to wipe out the enemy tanks and move on to the next task. This is the way in which more lightly armed American soldiers in Iraq were often able to get the better of Iraqi tank units. So, France's new vehicles, while not being quite as capable as those of the United States, will still provide intelligent, powerful, and reliable platforms for its armed forces. They will also be far more replaceable, meaning that the French economy would not need to spend years retooling for a war in order to make them producible at the scale needed to deal with the attrition rate of a peer-based battlefield. In contrast, vehicles like the US Army's Stryker infantry carrier require much more specialized parts that will be difficult to produce in a peacetime economy. Aside from its hardware upgrades and new procurements, Project Scorpion aims to enhance interoperability between the armies of Europe. For example, Belgium has cooperated with France in producing the Jaguar, and it too operates the vehicle. In 2019, Belgium announced it would buy at least 60 Jaguars and 382 Griffins. This makes cross-training and shared logistics between the two countries easier. Indeed, Belgium has cooperated with France in supporting and operating the vehicles. In 2021, Luxembourg was assessing whether it too should join France's Project Scorpion. For President Macron, this inter-European cooperation is an essential part of his strategy for France. Years before the Russian invasion of Ukraine, he was one of several prominent European policymakers urging the necessity of a security posture for Europe that was independent of the United States. To him, while American cooperation and the NATO alliance remains essential, Europe needed to do more to create a stable security framework through its own actions, especially given the turbulent domestic politics in the United States and a shifting foreign policy focus in Washington. European countries, in other words, could no longer afford to be the free riders that President Obama and Trump had accused them of being. The war in Ukraine and dwindling American support as its presidential election year ramped up spurred his comments in February 2024. We cannot wait for the outcome of the American elections to decide what our future is going to be. It's the future of Europe that's at stake, so therefore it's up to the Europeans to decide. If others want to join in and help, fantastic, but that's just an added bonus.
Macron insisted that Europe must take the lead in supplying Ukraine with badly needed ammunition and must further buttress a domestic defence industry. He supported Estonia's idea for the European Union to issue defence bonds for such a purpose, although the Germans and Dutch are so far resistant to this proposal. The expansion of Project Scorpion to include other countries in Europe would be a natural evolution of this philosophy. France has already fielded a Scorpion modernized brigade and plans to field its first Scorpion modernized armored division next year. However, the French have no plans to stop with Project Scorpion. More recently, Paris has announced a second phase of the broader military modernization push, a phase it calls Project Titan, which was launched in 2018. While Scorpion largely focused on France's fleet of lighter vehicles, Titan's primary objective will be to modernize and better equip the country with heavier instruments of war, such as tanks, artillery, helicopters, and aircraft. Titan's primary objective is to deliver the necessary combined arms equipment for high-intensity, state-based warfare as part of an all-aspect approach to warfare. According to Charles Boudouin, a retired general in the French army who led Scorpion in the technical section, Titan will aim to aggregate the lower-intensity experiences seen in the War on Terror with the higher-intensity type of warfare seen in Ukraine. Strategies to counter anti-access area denial systems are a big part of Project Titan, and France is carefully studying how this A2AD environment might evolve before it makes big purchases. As the action in Ukraine has revealed the importance of rapid infantry response and situational awareness via drones, Paris is likely pleased with the emphasis of the earlier Project Scorpion, and a new push to make capable drones is natural. France is also well aware that these lighter, more mobile forces have defeated heavier units such as tanks through the use of systems like portable anti-armor weapons and even commercial drones armed with anti-tank grenades. A study of these emerging realities will influence the purchases and improvements of heavy equipment under Titan. The emphasis on situational awareness and data sharing seen in Project Scorpion will be continued in Titan. As part of this focus, the French army is working with the procurement office to create a high-capacity data network set to enter service after 2040. In May 2022, Arnaud Goujon, a colonel in the French army who was attending a conference on land weapons hosted by France's Fondation pour la Recherche Stratégique think tank, described the effort as a strategy of simultaneity. He mentioned that Titan was not just about platforms, in other words, it was about software as much as hardware. Extending a combat cloud for the country's ground forces is a way to follow up on Project Scorpion's drive to deliver lighter and medium vehicles to the French military and further improve their situational awareness. As part of this, the French plan to use a next-generation communication system that calls on metadata and is enhanced with artificial intelligence to speed up data sharing and decision-making. All Project Scorpion vehicles will be upgraded with the breakthroughs that Titan produces, enabling an extension of their service life, which is important because even the new Jaguar will be entering the middle of its ordinarily expected service life by the time Titan updates are all finished. Titan partially aims to cover the gaps that Project Scorpion will leave in its wake once it's completed. One of the bigger gaps in Scorpion was the relative lack of defense against anti-tank missiles and drones. The French brass also expects the new Titan-produced vehicles to come with intelligent robotics, at least in a few cases. Once the French brass gets a complete review on the demands for heavy equipment on the modern battlefield, Project Titan plans for a number of hardware upgrades. The centerpiece of these upgrades will be a successor to the Leclerc tank, which has been in service since the early 1990s. Details are sparse as to whether this is officially a part of Project Titan, but France and Germany have been collaborating on a new tank since at least 2018. Back then, the Leopards manufacturer, Germany's KMW company, and France's Nexta Defense Systems, which makes the Leclerc, collaborated to produce a hybrid of the two tanks and demonstrated their capacity to work together. France and Germany have decided to create a next-generation main battle tank under the moniker of Main Ground Combat System. The two countries intend to replace their respective main battle tanks with the product of the MGCS by 2040. In 2018, Jaynes noted that the date could be moved up a few years because the collaboration between the two countries was already well advanced. There are also reportedly unmanned systems to go along with the new tank. The two countries are also working on a new artillery project called the Common Indirect Fire System. This will be a self-propelled howitzer which will replace France's Caesar and Germany's PZH-2000. This new artillery is expected to enter service by around 2035. In building the new artillery system, Titan will draw on two European Union studies on future artillery systems. These are the Future Indirect Fires European Solution Fires, and the European Common Long Range Indirect Fire Support System e -colors. 
These studies each got a budget of almost $4 million and are expected to be completed this year. Fires will look at potential next-generation 155mm artillery shells and rockets, while E-Colors will consider an improved European 155mm cannon and whether this and a rocket launcher can be mounted on a hybrid truck. The French are looking to the skies as well, hoping that Titan will create a next-generation helicopter to replace the Tiger, which came into service in the 1990s. Project Titan also aims to create a replacement for the Mistral 3. The Mistral is a family of short-range air defense missile systems that can be deployed from vehicles, ships, helicopters, and even in a portable configuration. Development of this system began in 1974, and it entered service in 1989. The Mistral 3 boasts better imaging processing abilities and enhanced engagement against targets that have minimal heat signatures, such as drones, turbojet-powered missiles, and fast attack craft at distances up to 7.5 kilometers. The Mistral 3 is also resistant against electronic warfare countermeasures. The Titan replacement will presumably improve on these attributes. It will be a mobile, ground-to-air, low-altitude system. Baudouin claims that Project Titan aims to offer total superiority by 2050. Obstacles remain for the project, however. For example, it's unclear if the MCGS project will go off without a hitch. The potential for the French and Germans to reduce their level of cooperation in the face of pressures from competing interests from other companies who want a place at the table remains. These are companies such as Germany's Rheinmetall and krauss maffei Wegmann, who have expressed their intention to be part of the new tank project. Rheinmetall is also working on its own new tank, the KF-51 Panther, which it began developing in 2016. It plans to target Leopard operators for sales of this tank. Meanwhile, another competing tank, the Enhanced Main Battle Tank, might also threaten the MCGS. This vehicle is manufactured by the aforementioned KNDS. Both companies would naturally like to see their projects prevail over the MCGS idea. Nevertheless, France is banking that Project Titan will successfully enhance its military capabilities. Paris is confident enough that it's looking even further into the future than Titan. Perhaps this is because of the ongoing success of Project Scorpion, which has generally delivered its ambitions on time and on budget. Looking further ahead, there's also Project Vulcan, which invests heavily in cyber warfare and will attempt to make the French army compatible with modern robotics by 2040. Another part of the war in Ukraine that France has tried to internalize is the renewed power of defensive armaments and the role that new technologies held by civilians plays on the modern battlefield. For example, civilians equipped with smartphones and drones can help to transmit the locations and movements of armed forces to other parties, threatening operational security. Finding answers to these challenges will be an important part of France's broader military buildup. Despite its reputation in some segments of popular culture, the French military has remained a capable and experienced fighting force. However, the war in Ukraine has driven home key vulnerabilities in Paris's arsenal and approach to warfare, especially in vehicles, drones, and artillery systems. France has seen no choice but to adapt to modern geopolitical and military realities. France was long Europe's leading military power. Now, with the United States increasingly focused on countering China in the Indo-Pacific region and its uncertain domestic politics making its commitment to European security less clear, Paris once again aims to take up the mantle and create a momentum that will allow the rest of the continent to follow in its wake. If Project Scorpion, Titan, and Vulcan succeed as intended, the French will be on their way to fielding a fighting force that will not only serve Paris's needs, but have a chance to serve as the pivot of European military affairs, as it had generally between the 14th and 19th centuries. But will these projects succeed as Paris and President Macron intend? Don't forget to let us know what you think in the comments. Also, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more military analysis from military experts. Now go and check out how the German military will become Europe's most powerful, or click this other video instead.